In this video, we're going to look at this new Gen 3 module from LZX. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to pronounce the name of it. While I'm tempted to call it PROC, seeing as it's a processing module, I'm guessing it's probably pronounced PROS. In any case, this module is a new updated Gen 3 take on something like the Passage. Every generation of LZX modules has had a similar utility module, and essentially, it's a basic voltage processor and mixer. In my personal opinion, this is the most indispensable module to have in a system. The controls here are very simple. You have two columns of inputs. These are labeled red, green, and blue, but you can use them for anything you desire. And then you have one column for your outputs. Each row is processed individually, but you also have normal connections so that you can just take two inputs and get three distinct outputs. The knobs are each bipolar processors. So the B knobs look at the B row of inputs and can attenuvert them. So you can have full all the way up, you can have it inverted, or you can have it turned off. And these knobs are notched in the middle, which I really like because the passage did not have that feature. And sometimes dialing in a pure zero was challenging. The C knobs are an offset that's added to the entire mix. So you get your A plus your B, based on where this knob is turned, plus a general offset from your C and that's what comes out of the output. So let's take a look at how this works. So I'm going to take a shape from my dual shape generator and go into the A input. And then I'll take the output and go into my coder. Now what we're seeing here is just an exact copy of what's coming out of my shape generator. And that's because the A signal pretty much passes through unaffected if your B and C are set to zero. So there's nothing plugged into B, so I'm not going to see anything here. But my C is going to apply an offset, or positive or negative, to my signal. So let's take another output from the other side of the shape generator and apply that to the B input. And now we'll be able to add or subtract this other shape. So this now is operating just as a basic mixer. So I can mix in how much B I want, and then I can offset the entire thing. I'll put the contrast up here a bit so we can see a little more clearly what this is doing. So this is just a really basic, fun way to mix things together. And because of these normal connections, we can take the red, green, and blue outputs into the red, green, and blue inputs on my encoder. So let me grab a different cable for that real quick. So these normal connections are going to mean that each channel takes those same inputs, but we can apply different offsets and variations. Now we could also break these normal connections, so I could take some different outputs from my shape generator. So now we have in the B input, slightly different version of this. Got the absolute going in there, and then we could take the max out and go into the third channel. So we can get a whole bunch of different color mixes here going on. And you'll see it's actually changing the shapes themselves. That's because we have this contrast up so high that these gradients are starting to clip. If we pull the contrast down, you'll see a much smoother gradient. So we can just get really nice color mixes here. So that's the most basic use of the processor, just as a simple mixer. In the next example, we'll look at probably the most common use, which is using it to add modulation to otherwise static images. If you're an experienced LZX user, this next patch should be pretty familiar to you. One of the great uses of voltage processors, whether it's Passage or the new processor module, in a video synthesis context, is being able to add modulation into static video shapes. So in this case, I'm going to once again 
take a shape from our dual shape generator into one channel of our processor. And we'll just take a look at that. Oh. And so here, you know, we can do our basic offsets. But what I'm going to do in this case is take a simple LFO here from Pendulum, and I'm going to add that into the B input. And so now as it adds this LFO to this basic shape, we get this kind of shifting gradient. And what's going on is it's taking the darkest parts of the image and it's pushing them up towards white. And then it starts to clip when it hits pure white. So what we end up getting is these kind of modulating shapes. And this is really nice if you use it in combination with a keyer. So I'm going to take that output, put it into the keychain, which is a very simple keyer. And then we start to get these moving shapes. Because those gradients are being added with the LFO, the threshold point of the keyer is starting to change. Now I'm going to do something a little bit tricky here with this module because it has these normal connections. If I'm using it for modulation, I tend to patch these sorts of modules from the bottom up because I don't necessarily want that modulation to affect what's going on upstream. So I'm going to take another LFO and go into my B output and I'm going to take another shape from the shape generator and go into my A input. So we're effectively doing the same thing here. Obviously I can't see anything, but if we were to look at this top channel, that's what we would see. So I'm going to make this one a little bit simpler. All right. And then we'll come out from this key again. So what I'm going to do is take this output and let's just try using that to CV this key real quick. You can see now I'm getting a much more complex black and white shape. And because of these normal connections, I could take another output from here, go into a separate keyer, and let's see what this looks like. There we go. So now the second keyer is taking a slightly different mix using that to draw a new threshold for a new color. And if we adjust these LFO speeds, let's see they're operating independently. So this is getting really nice because we have a whole bunch of interrelated stuff going on. And the processors at the center of all of it, controlling how these mixes come and just giving us some really nice, sophisticated, complicated results. And of course we could also plug in a more interesting modulation source. Uh, I'm taking just an audio rate oscillator. It just looks like this. So we just have a scrolling bar and we could break this normalization in the B channel here. And so again, we get another level of complexity going on. And of course, changing our basic shapes here is going to make a big difference. So that's a little bit about how to use the processor module to generate complex shapes using modulation. For this last patch, we're going to look at a really basic but nonetheless useful way to use the processor module. As is obvious from the design of the Gen 3 modules, RGB workflows are a more inherent part of the patching process. So we're going to look at how you can use this as just a basic RGB color mixer. For this example, I already have a basic color image in this case, I'm generating it with a shape generator, a matrix mixer, 
and that's it. This could also be a full color video input, for example, or anything else you create in your system. So I'm going to take the RGB outputs and I'm going to put them into the A channel inputs on my processor. I'm going to take the outputs from the PROC and we'll put those in run the encoder. So now we're going to get an exact duplicate of what we had before. Of course, now we can use, sorry, we can use our offset controls to fine tune this. It starts to give us a little bit finer control over what we're doing here. So you can start to get these nice subtle variations. Of course, this isn't really anything different than what you could do on the matrix mixer itself. But let's add another level of complexity here. So we'll take this output and we will plug it into the foreground on a keyer. And then we could take the keyer output into the encoder. And I want to take this output from the matrix mixer and I'm going to distribute it to two different destinations. So I'm going to put it back into the processor and I'm going to put it also into the background of the keyer. Okay, so now that I have this rather complicated patching set up, uh, basically what we have is on the background, <clears throat> we have the original signal coming out of the matrix mixer. In the foreground, we have the processed version. We have nothing plugged into our key input. So let's just plug in a simple scrolling bar again. And now you can see it's going to key back and forth between our original version and our processed version. Oh, sorry, wrong knobs. So while it's a pretty simple example, you could see why this could be really useful. Having an auxiliary color mixer like this gives you a different version of your color here. And if we used something more complicated as our key source, like say another variation here from our shape generator, you can get these two color mixes blended in different ways. Now this of course is something you could also do with a separate color mixer, like a, another matrix mixer if we had two of those, but having something as small, affordable, and HP friendly as the processor module really opens up some interesting color mixing workflows in a more efficient way. And of course, if we want to get more complicated, we can also start to add in some modulation. So I can go And start to make use of the B channel in some different ways as well. Get an LFO in one of them. And just for fun, let's get that threshold moving. just a little bit. Let's start to play with some different shapes and see what we can get. So those are just a few basic ways to get started with your processor module or PROC. It's a really great utility and every system I think needs at least one, if not three or four. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions you have in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.